Hey folks, what's up? This is Evan from Stock Music Musician and today's video I want to talk about three things that I would really love to see in the upcoming Combinator 2 or whatever it's going to be called that is going to be released with Reason 12 in September. I hope it's not too late to give these suggestions. Um, these are some things that have always kind of bothered me about Combinator and I hope will make it better uh, for all of us to use in the future. If you've got any suggestions that I've left out, please be sure to leave them in the comments. And I want to let you know that I've got a free Reason cheat sheet. It walks you through all the major devices in Reason. You can download it at the link below. Uh, it'll help you quickly get up to date learning how to use everything cool in Reason and helping you figure out what you should choose. Before we go farther though, let's watch the intro. Okay, so the Combinator is pretty much the coolest thing in Reason. It's like uh, one of the best tools that exists. And I'm super excited to hear that they're updating it. Whether you use Reason as a standalone DAW or you start using it as a plugin, the Combinator should become your friend because it lets you do so much. It basically lets you combine a bunch of different devices and control them in really cool and powerful ways. Totally unique, uh, totally cool. So, the first thing I'd like to see in uh, a Combinator 2.0, let me just insert a device or two so we can actually have something to uh, modulate. So, if you click on a button within um, Combinator, you can map like Rotary 1 to, let's say, let's just go Global Options, output volume. So keep an eye on this um, button here. So if I turn this all the way to the right, this volume goes all the way to the right, all the way to the left. Great. What I would love to see is an inverse option on the combinator. So for example, if I turn this all the way to the right, the volume here would actually go all the way to the left and vice versa, because you don't need it for one instrument, but you might need it if you're using two instruments. So let's say I had a situation where instead I have a mixer here, right? I've got a couple of, like this is a, this is, I keep on trying to make sense like this and it just doesn't quite work out, right? I've got volume A and volume, or volume one and volume two. And let's say I have two different synths here, two different bases. For example, I wanna create a really cool morphine sound between them. Well, if we were to take this line mixer here, I don't have those bases plugged in by the way, um, but you know, level channel one and level rotary one uh, to channel two. I'd want them to move in opposite directions, right? So if I had an inverse option, when I move this, one would turn up and the other would turn down and vice versa. There's a million other ways you could do this, um, a million other things that it could do, but, um, and so, uh, yeah, that's just a thing that I think would be super powerful. Um, similarly with um, uh, with all of these, I think, you know, there would be a lot of the devices in Reason. Like here, if you do the CV programmer in, you do have the option of going bipolar and unipolar. Uh, but what I, what I want to point out is like on certain utilities, like on Pulsar, you actually have the inverse or the inverted CV and audio. And it would just be great if we could have an ability to do that here. Similarly, the, um, you know, the spider CV merger can invert it, but I want to be able to do it internally in the combinator itself. The next thing I'd love to see in a combinator too, is a button amongst all of these buttons that would auto gain stage. So let's say you've got a bunch of different effects in between here. We'll just set this up real quick. Sure, we'll have a clang going into a mog EQ, going into a dual filter. That's this Etched also is a super cool thing if you've never used it. One of my favorite VS, uh, rack extensions. Uh, but it would be great if there was a button you could press here that would adjust the output volumes of each process with all in the chain to whatever you choose to be a unity gain for purposes of gain staging. Because you can spend so long tracking down 
what's going on with the volume, getting into gain staging issues and all of that. And the reason, reason knows the level of everything. So it'd be great if we could just press a button, boom, adjust it. You know, it wouldn't automatically keep up to date because maybe you want to change it, but to have the ability to just set everything at Unity so that each step along the way is Unity, not so that just that the end result would be Unity gain, but like the signal that this passes to this, this passes to this, and then this outputs back to the combinator would all be at Unity. And the final thing that I think would be really cool to see in a Combinator 3 is just more buttons, more rotaries, um, other types of controls even. We've got buttons, we've got rotaries, um, but it would be great to see some of the more advanced controls we've gotten in Reason over the years. Some of the cool new types of controls, for example, um, with like the sweeper. Right, like the ability to modulate. Yeah, I can take this and put this modulator. I guess I can't even put this uh, modulator exactly in here. So um, something like this modulator to actually have the ability to draw in your own curves within Combinator and have it adjust and affect the instruments would be radically powerful. Um, my understanding is that it's going to be a somewhat modular tool where you can combine all sorts of different components. And I would love to see um, a modulator like this that we could put in it. Probably some LFO shapes too. Why, why separately route things in when you could just lock them in? Um, but One other feature I thought would be really cool to add to um, the new combinator would be something kind of like an XY pad. You see this in a lot of synths, where basically it lets you morph between various settings really easily. So, you know, all the way top left, all the way bottom right, everything in between. You set the certain states for what each of that means in terms of the buttons and where the buttons move, and then you can control it either via an LFO or via just other controls. I mean, I think the Thor itself actually has an XY filter. So again, this technology is sort of somewhere within reason um, and its code. It's just the sort of thing that would be great to have added into the Combinator so that we can control multiple parameters even better. And I think this would really especially help live performers. But anyway, that's what I'd like to see in the Combinator too. Some of the things at least. Um, I'm interested in what you guys would like. I use Combinator a fair amount, but I'm in no way um, like a Combinator wizard. So if you guys have any other cool thoughts, uh, I would love to hear them. Also, if you know how to do inverse uh, <laughs> mixing uh, for the mixer channels, I would love to know how to do that. Um, but I've banged my head on the wall doing that with Combinator for a long time. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more reason tips, news, and just general music production advice. I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.